that these things was right. You understand? But then when I go into the Bible and I look at it and I don't find it, that there has to be a change or something got to be proven. I know so that's, that's where I'm at in my life, right? If, if it can be proven, then fine, let's deal with it. It's not going to take away from me getting into the kingdom as long as you can prove it. But if it can't be proven, I don't even want to deal with it because that's when we get into arguments, that's when we get into um, things that, that stop people from getting salvation and get people angry and things like that. So the most important thing you can do is prove everything. Uh, read me Matthew 1 and 1. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 1 verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. So this is the generations of Jesus Christ, read. The son of David. The son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Judah. Judah. And his brethren. So this is the lineage of Christ. Now I could read the whole thing. You know, you know Matthew 1 is all about the lineage, right? I just want to show you the lineage of the kings. Read me verse 6. And Jesse begot David the king. And David the king begot Solomon of her that had been wife of Urus. So David the king begot Solomon, Solomon begot Rehoboam, Rehoboam begot Abiah and Asa, and continued on down, let's get to verse 16. St. Matthew chapter 1 verse 16, and Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary. Husband of who? The husband of Mary. That's another thing they don't teach in church, sex is marriage. Sex is marriage. You don't need a pastor to stand in front of you. Adam and Eve got married without a pastor. Right? They had sex before when we was in slavery. All we did was jump over a broom. <laughs> we didn't have no pastor. You understand? So this, this institutionalized way of getting married has changed everybody's think thought process of what marriage is and what divorce is, what fornication is and what adultery is. It's, it's been changed. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm married. Once I go into a woman, that's my wife. When she agrees to lay down with me, I've consummated the marriage. And now we husband and wife. So here in Matthew, you find that Joseph is the husband of Mary. When you read Luke though, what what the married tell an angel? I never knew a man. I don't know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I never even touched a man. I'm a guy that this child that you're talking about. Joseph didn't speak to the angel though. Mary knew that she was going to give birth to Christ, right? She knew that she, she didn't know she was going to meet Joseph until she met him. They got a spouse, and then the Holy Spirit or the the Father Spirit came over her, right? Um, uh, what's the word they use? Um, over. Overshadowed them, right? So they say that uh, the Father Spirit overshadowed them. When you look up the word overshadow, it tells you to beautify. So when Joseph looked at her, he was like, Man, I can't wait. I can't wait for the ceremony. I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? And she was okay with it because she already spoke to the angel. So she knew that she was going to give birth to a child that was going to be the Savior, right? Joseph didn't know that though. So Joseph's like, oh man, I messed up now. Dad, he came to his senses like, that. I gotta put her away, I gotta hide her. Because if they find out what they're gonna do to her, they're gonna stone her, right? That's the law. If you if you play the harlot, you get stoned. If you break the commandment as a brother, you get stoned. So he couldn't tell him, listen, I had sex with your child. Because the father gonna stone him. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Um, go to verse 20. And listen, you can read the whole thing. You know, I'm just trying to get to the point, so... Uh, that the understanding comes through. Give me verse 20, uh, yeah, start on 20. Uh, matter of fact, start at, start at 19. St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 19. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ went, read. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. And we know the word espoused means to be engaged, right? Does it say that there? Oh yeah, it says it right there. It says engaged. So the word espoused means to be engaged, read. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So before they even got to live together the way that we do today, you get married, you're going to live with your wife or your husband. Before they came to live together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. Who found that? Joseph. Because wasn't everybody like, oh snap, your Mary's pregnant. Because they would have stoned her. Right? Read. That Joseph, her husband. And who? That Joseph, her husband. So in one verse up, they engaged. The next verse down, they married. So something happened. It might seem like a short time because it's one verse, but there was some time there, right? Read. That Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. A public example means they're going to stone her in front of everybody. Right? Read. Was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, 
the angel of the Lord appeared on, onto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Thou son of who? Thou son of David. Joseph, thou son of David. Right, give you guys the sure, brother. Bless you, bro. Yeah, man. Oh, you got up. All right, bless you, bro. Stay on that. And all we're doing right now is showing y'all how Christ was not born the way that they believed that he was born. He was not immaculately born. There is no immaculate conception in the Bible. That doesn't exist. It should be called the immaculate deception. Everybody believed Christ was floated down from heaven into Mary's belly. Uh, where you at? Verse 19? Uh, verse 20. Read me verse 20 again. St. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Thou son of who? Thou son of David. Joseph is the son of David. Read. Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Let's use the real name. And she called his name what? Thou shalt call his name Yeshua. You're going to call him the Savior, the Redeemer, the Deliverer, because that's his name in Hebrew. We can all agree that Christ wasn't a Greek. Christ, Christ wasn't from Greece. Christ wasn't from Rome. So there's no way that they would have called him Jesus because Jesus is a Greek name. And every time you call on the name Jesus, do I have that with me, man? Let me check. Everybody knows that Christ's name is not Jesus. We're the only ones that, we're the only ones that call, well, not us. Only our people will go to a church and learn about a Hebrew with a Greek name. That's crazy. You learn about a Hebrew brother with a Greek name doing, doing Roman customs. And, 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 and that's some crazy mess, man. You learn about a white guy in a toga from Rome that's a Hebrew with a Greek name doing African customs. Crazy. Crazy. That's what church is nowadays. A jumbled up mess of confusion. You got the woman up there preaching. You got the men back there like, how come I don't got that spirit? When you do, but they oppressing you. A lot of women don't want to hear there ain't supposed to be no women preachers, but there's not. There should be no women pastors in the, in the church. And if you can show me one woman pastor in the Bible, then I will come to your church. And I'll get baptized by your woman preacher. If you can show me one woman pastor, one woman preacher. Show me where it says, I suffer a woman to preach. What scripture is that? Juanita Bynum, disgrace to her nationality. Disgrace. And any other, and any other woman preacher that dares pick up the, the Bible and say that she's above the man. And listen, we don't rule over our women with iron fists. We, our women just know the right. They, they are virtuous women. The problem is that our brothers are not righteous. They're not righteous enough to put down Lil Wayne and Jay-Z and Rick Ross and stop acting like they not employees and stop acting like bosses. You're an employee. Stop trying to be a boss. Rick Ross is an employee. Following a brother that signed to a label that gotta make, that gotta make a, um, you gotta make a quota every year, every album. Brother not no boss. Bosses don't answer to nobody. Give me Acts 2 and 29 real quick. We can, and give me Galatians. Excuse me, Hebrews 2 and 16. Yeah. Yeah, read that for me. Acts chapter 2, verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. David is dead and gone, read. And the sepulchre is with us unto this day. And, and his grave is here with us unto this day, read. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, of the fruit of his spirit, 
Uh, that of the fruit of his loins. That of the fruit of David's loins. Where's the fruit of a man's loins? Anybody know where that's at? Where's the fruit of a man's loins? They got they got underwear called fruit of the loom. You don't put that on your head, do you? You don't wear that as a shirt, do you? What is the what is the fruit of the loom cover? The fruit of his what? That of the fruit of his loins. According to the flesh, according to the spirit, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. That's what Christ came through. Christ came through the fruit of David's loins, which went into Solomon, which went into Rohabam, which went through Asa, which went all the way down until Joseph. Joseph had sex with Mary through the fruit of Joseph's loins, came through Christ. And if you don't believe that Christ was born in the flesh, the way that everybody else was born, that makes you an antichrist. And we can read it. Grab me that too. Yeah, read that for me. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Read that again. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Christ did not take on him the nature of angels. Angels are born spiritually. They live in the heavens. They come down to earth as spirits. They put on flesh. They do that in the spirit though. So if you believe Christ came down like an angel, that makes you an antichrist. Read that again. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. The seed of who? The seed of Abraham. But he took on him the semen of Abraham. That's how Christ was born. Through the semen of Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's how Christ was born. If you want to believe that Christ is some sort of spirit born born through a woman you're an antichrist that's what that makes you and listen don't take my word for it we're going to read the scripture but read on for me read verse 17 wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren it behooved Christ to be made like his brethren tell me that Tell me that, that John the Baptist was born through the Holy Spirit having sex with Elizabeth. Tell me that happened. Tell me that Peter was born through the Holy Spirit having sex with Elizabeth. Um, excuse me, with his mother. Tell me that happened. Tell me that everybody that was Christ's brother, like David, like Solomon, like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like Malachi, like Obadiah. Tell me they was born the way Christ was born in the way that you teach it in your Sunday churches. Read that again. 16. I mean, uh, 17, right? Hey, read that again. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. He wanted to be made just like the other Israelites. Read. That he might be merciful and faithful, high priest, in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So Christ wanted to be able to understand how to make the reconciliation for the people. He had to be born like me and you. Grab me Romans 9 and 9 while you're there. You got me. Oh, good, right? yeah, read that for me. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. Read. But try the spirit, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many false prophets, and a lot of the false prophets come from, well, every false prophet comes from, the, from religion. But a majority of them came from the Catholic Church. They were the first false, the real first false prophets to teach a false prophet doctrine. They taught, they used the Bible and taught out the Bible and made you think that everything that they were saying was backed up by scripture. But all they did was have a Bible open and say things that came to their mind. Read on. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. That's how you know the Spirit of God. Read. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Anybody that confessed that Christ was born the way man and woman give birth. Read. Is of God. That's who's of God. The people that believe that Joseph has sex with Mary. That's who's of God. Read. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Oh, Christ was born through the Holy Spirit floating down into Jesus, um, Mary's belly and giving birth. Anybody that believes that, read. It's not of God. It's what? It's not of God. If you believe in the Immaculate Conception, you are not of God at all. 
Greek, and this is that spirit of Antichrist. This is that spirit of righteousness.